Okay, lesson five is we're going to go over scale diagrams. I'm going to review rate, ratio, and unit rate. So here's a shark, and it says the great white shark can grow to a length of about 6.5 meters. The diagram is a scale drawing of a great white. The actual length of a shark, we need to know the actual the scale of the diagram. So if we can, if we knew the scale and we can measure this guy, then we can figure out okay how big is he actually. Scale can be given in the following way. So um, one is a statement. So if a statement where you're just using words, one centimeter, and then we use the word word represents 0 0.5 meters. Another way is as a rate. And remember, rate has different units versus a ratio are the same units. So if it's a rate, you could say one centimeter is 0.5 meters or one centimeter over 0.5 meters. And ratios are the same units. And so uh, in order to convert this guy, one centimeter is 0 0.5 meters. There, right now it's a rate because the units are different. And so if we change 0.5 meters into centimeters, and we do that, remember, uh, on our chart, meters, it goes meters, decimeters, and then centimeters, we have to go 1, 2 to the right. And so we take our decimal place 2 to the right, and that's how we get 1 centimeter is 50 centimeters in actual life. Now, whenever the units are identical, we don't actually have to write the units, and so we just write 1 to 50, meaning 1 is 50 times bigger than the other. We can say that for certainty because the units are the same. And, and the last is a line graph, and this is often used on a map. And so from that, uh, the easiest we could see here, there's our meters. Usually on a line graph, this would be one centimeter. One centimeter. So one tick is one centimeter. So I could say one centimeter is equivalent to, just by looking at it, 0.5 on the bottom, you can see your meters. 0.5 meters. So that this distance here, here's your meters. This is 0.5 meters, and each one of these ticks will always be a centimeter in length. And you should be able to double check that with your ruler. Now you're going to need a ruler for this lesson. On the first question, we're going to refer to the shark above. So the length of the sharks are generally measured from the tip of their nose to the middle of the tail. So tip of the nose, right around here, to the tip of the tail. Sorry, middle of the tail. Okay, so we're going to need our ruler. We're going to measure that distance in a moment. And I have mine ready to go. Measure the length of the shark in the scale diagram and use proportional reasoning to determine the actual length of the shark, shark represented in the scale, uh, scale diagram. So we have a couple things we need. One, we need to know the scale. And the scale is given above. It was given in four different ways, actually. So I'm going to work with that one centimeter is equal to 0.5 meters. Okay. That's one piece of information I need. The other piece of information I need is to measure my, my shark. So I need to take my ruler and I'm going to measure from the tip of his nose to the middle of his tail. And that, with, when I measure that, it should give me 9.6 centimeters. 9.6 centimeters. So we measured 9.6 centimeters. Now a few ways to calculate this. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few ways. One is proportional reasoning. If proportional reasoning is very similar to lesson two, where we have one centimeter over is 0.5 meters. That's the ratio. Equals, so we measured 9.6 centimeters, and we're looking for how big our shark is in meters, x meters. So that's one way we can set it up. Again, you would cross multiply and then go from there. That's one method. Another one is take our measurement we just measured, 9.6 centimeters. We're going to multiply it by our scale. So our scale is 0 0.5 meters is equivalent to one centimeter of drawing. So for every one centimeter drawing, that'd be equal 0 0.5 meters. Notice how the centimeter cancel and we're going to get our unit in meters. So for every one centimeter is a half a meter actual. So I'm going to multiply by that half, and that will give us our answer as well. Either would work. Both is going to give us a solution of 4.8 meters actual length. And that's actual.
individual legs. Okay, so moving on to the next page, we have a map of Alberta and then a map, map of BC. And notice they give us a scale, and they give us uh, the type of scale here would be a line graph scale. So just by looking at this, notice this is our one centimeter. If you took a ruler, it would be one centimeter. And so our scale here is one centimeter is a, on the map is equivalent to 75 kilometers in real life. So let's use the line graph scale to determine the approximate straight line distance between Calgary and Edmonton. So we want to find Calgary and Edmonton. I believe it's these are the, not the greatest to read. I believe Calgary, if this is Red Deer, find Airdrie. So then this is actually Calgary right there, right below Airdrie. And if you find Leduc, and you find, see this hollow circle is Edmonton. And we need to take a ruler, and I need you to measure the straight line distance. If you take a, uh, a ruler, draw a straight line between Edmonton and Calgary, that's the distance you want to measure in centimeters. And why centimeters? Because that's how our map scale is set up. So if you measure that as accurate as you can, you should get 3.6 centimeters. So distance on the map is 3.6 centimeters. Okay, so in our scale that we're working with, remember, is 1 centimeter, 75 kilometers in actuality. So there's two ways we can set this up. The one is proportional reasoning. So uh, we can go 1 centimeter over 75 kilometers, or you could go 75 kilometers over 1 centimeter, is equal to, we measured 3.6. Remember, above, on, on top I put the map, on the bottom I'm putting the actual. So it goes the same order. Map, I measured 3.6, and x actual. How many kilometers is that? So you want to solve that. You can cross multiply. 1 times x is x, and then 75 times 3.6. 75 times 3.6 gives you 270 kilometers. Straight line distance. So Obviously, when we travel to, to Calgary, it's not a straight line distance. There's some curves when you drive. It's not, we can't go straight through farmer's fields. The other way you could set this up is we take our, our map distance that we measured, 3.6 centimeters, and multiply it by our ratio. And our ratio is 75 kilometers for every one centimeter on the map. Notice again, the centimeters will cancel. That's what we want. And when we multiply that, we get 270 kilometers. And there you go. So both methods are fine. So if you turn the page, we're going to look at British Columbia now. And this is the fun part, because we're not as familiar with British Columbia as we are with Alberta. We're going to calculate the approximate straight line distance between New Hazleton and Prince George. So we need to find New Hazleton and Prince George. I'm pretty sure get this correct, New Hazleton is kind of top left of Prince Rupert, and Prince George, we want to find, it's going to be above Williams Lake, see that there? And we want to measure this straight line distance, measure that straight line distance, and if you do, you should get about 3.4 centimeters on the map. Now notice the scale down right here, one centimeter on the map is 100 kilometers in real life. So, if I have 3.4 centimeters on the map, we're looking for the actual distance, the straight line distance. We're going to multiply by, I can get 100 kilometers actual for every one centimeter map. Notice the centimeters will cancel, and that equals 340 kilometers. You could have also set up a ratio, so 100 centimeter, uh, kilometers on the map over 1 centimeter on the map, sorry, 100 kilometers actual for every 1 centimeter on the map equals x kilometers over, we measured 3.4 centimeters. And again, we would cross multiply 
and you would get the same thing, 340 kilometers. Okay, both would work. All right, so is it, the answer is A, a realistic estimate of the actual driving distance. So let's look at the map. So if I had to go through Prince George, from Prince George to New Hazleton, it looks like we'd have to go uh, down all through the, by Fraser Lake, Burns Lake, and then into Prince George. And you can kind of tell the terrain by looking at this map, it's not an accurate estimate because it looks like there's a mountain there and you can't just drive over a mountain. And it wouldn't be a straight line even if we wanted to drive over a mountain. So, uh, no, it's not the, it's not a, a, the be best a uh, estimate. We could have maybe done a straight line distance from New Hazleton to, say, Fraser, and then Fraser to Prince George to get a more accurate estimate. So let's write that out. It says explain or describe, so let's use words. So since the road is not a straight line, since the road is not a straight line, A straight line distance is not an accurate approximate. It is not an accurate approximate. For a better approximate, Calculate the straight line distance from New Hazleton to, say, Houston, and then Houston to Prince George. We also said Fraser Lake. Well, Houston would work too. Um, for a better approximate, calculate the straight line distance. from New Hazleton to Houston and from Houston to Prince George. To Prince George. Then add them. So, since the road is not a straight line, a straight line distance is not an accurate approximate. For a better approximate, calculate the straight line distance from New Hazleton to Houston and from Houston to Prince George, and then add them. So Houston is right here, New Hazleton to Houston, Houston to Prince George. Give us a better estimate. All right, let's look at example number four on the next page. Tyler's scale diagram of a tower is shown. The actual tower is 250 meters. Now again, you're going to need a ruler here. And so for your homework, you'll probably need one too. Oh, oh, one of those tape ruler. Make sure you're just a little shy. Should be a little bit more of a guy. Now, I don't know how accurate. It should be a little bit better. There you go. So if we measure... Um, this guy, we're going to, well, let's go to the question. It says, Tyler's scale diagram of tower is shown. The actual tower is 250 meters tall. Write the scale Tyler used. So whenever we do a map scale, you're going to do your map compared to the actual. Or your new compared to the actual. Okay, so... Here, let's measure this. Now, on your piece of paper, if you grab a ruler, you'll get a better, um, more accurate measurement. But you should get from the tip of the tower, but right to the bottom, as 8 centimeters. So right now, uh, the ratio is this actual, or the map, is either we can do it with a colon, map to actual, or map divided by actual. So 
So our map, map measurement is 8 centimeters, and our actual is 240. We should probably, well, we should always reduce our fraction. So let's do that in your calculator. You can reduce your fraction by taking your calculator and going 8 divided by 240. And that, let's go math, enter, enter, and it's 1 over 30. So 1 centimeter on the map or on, yeah, our drawing is 30 meters in actuality. So, now, it says write this as a statement. So we could say one centimeter of the drawing, or one centimeter represents 30 meters in actuality. As a rate, remember rates are different units different units. So we're already good to go because ours are in different units. So I'll write this as with a colon, one centimeter, colon, and then 30 meters. Now, as a ratio, our ratio has to be, remember, same units. So we want to convert now we don't want decimals. Whenever you have a ratio, you don't want any decimals. And so let's convert meters to centimeters instead of centimeters to meters. Because if I change a centimeter to a meter, it'd be 0 0.01. So right now we want to change our 30 meters into centimeters. So on our scale, remember King Henry's daughter Mary died chasing men or kill him dead but don't commit to murder. So we're going from meters, two centimeters is going to be two to the right. So we take our decimal place, go two to the right as well, add in some zeros. And so that's 3,000 3, centimeters. And so now we're just gonna rewrite our ratio as one centimeter was 3,000 centimeters in actual. You don't have to write units when it's a ratio because the units are the same. The nice thing about a ratio is you can see, oh, the, the building in actuality is 3,000 times larger than our drawing. Okay, it's measurements are 3,000 times larger than our, than our drawing. Okay, so Kylie from Abstract Renovations designs a plan for a candy store to be renovated. The scale drawing on the plan for the candy store is one centimeter of, for the drawing is 50 centimeters actual. So here's our drawing, our map to actual. Actual, and then our, our map. Okay, our scale diagram. Scale diagram compared to the actual, which also makes sense. You can always, you can always make sense of it, right? They'll, they'll talk about whether they'll have the actual and you're, you're drawing a scale, or maybe if you're making a, uh, a model of something that's gonna be larger than the original, maybe you're making a model butterfly or something. And so usually you can make sense of your scale pretty easily. What are the actual dimensions of the storage room if the scale diagram dimensions is eight centimeters by 12 centimeters? So we have eight centimeters on my drawing, or, and we want to multiply it by our scale, and our scale is 50 to 1. 50 to, we want to multiply 50 actual for every one map, right? And if you want to make sense of it, to make sure you're putting things in the right spot, 8 centimeters was on your drawing, 50 was actual over drawing, and so it still should work out where the drawings are canceling each other out, especially here where the units are the same. So 8 times 50 is going to give you 400 centimeters. Now we take our other dimension, which was 12 centimeters of the drawing, or the scale drawing. We're going to multiply it by our scale, which was 50 centimeters actual for every 1 centimeter in the drawing. So we know these are going to cancel out and we get 
it 12 times 50 is 600 centimeters. So uh, we could either say that your dimensions are 400 centimeters by 600 centimeters, or we can convert, convert that to meters just by dividing it by 100. So 4 meters by 6 meters. And there's our solution. Now again, just a little note, side note, you could have set this up as a ratio. So we know our ratio was one centimeter uh, on the drawing for every 50 centimeters actual. We measured uh, eight centimeters and we we're looking for our drawing length. So you again could use that and cross multiply. B, what are the dimensions of the plan if the dimension of the chocolate section of the store are to be expanded to be 3.5 meters by 4.75 meters. Now the first thing you should notice is that our scale right now is one centimeter is equivalent to 50 centimeters. One centimeter in the drawing is 50 of the actual. But notice that our scale is centimeters and they give us our measurement in meters. We need to make sure that our if they give us an like actual measurement, then that should be the same unit as our actual measurement in our scale. So our very first step is we need to convert. We're going to convert our measurements into centimeters. So our first step, 3.5 meters times, we want to change that to centimeters. So you either move your decimal, so exactly what we did before, from meters to centimeters is 2 to the right, and so you can move your decimal place two to the right, one, two, and get 350, or use unit analysis. Let me just erase this. Use unit analysis, and we have for every one meter, there's 100 centimeters. And that gives us 350 centimeters. We can do that with our other measurement, 4.75 meters times, we want the meters to cancel, so it goes on the bottom, looking for centimeters, and one meter is 100 centimeters, so 475 centimeters. Okay, so now we're going the other direction. We have our actual. There's a few ways we can set this up. One method is we use proportional reasoning. So we know one centimeter on the drawing is 50 centimeters on the actual object. This time, they give us that the actual object is one of them was 350 centimeters, and we're looking for x on the drawing. That's one method we can use to set it up. And then, of course, we cross multiply. Or to get x by itself, let's multiply both sides by 350. Okay, and so that's one method. The other method we can use to solve this is we take our 350 centimeters, and this is actual. So we're going to multiply it by our scale, but our scale this time, we need to flip it. We know it's one centimeter of the drawing is equivalent to 50 centimeters actual. So times it by 150 or divide, it's like taking 350 and dividing it by 50. Either method would work. Okay. Um, if you cross multiply, you'd still, you're still going to do the same thing. It'd be 350 divided by 50, and we get our measurement, the first measurement here, to be 7 centimeters. Okay, that's one of them. So uh, the second guy, this is 475 centimeters. So if you want to use the ratios, 1 centimeter over 50 centimeters. Make sure you don't, if your units are the same, like that's why I've been writing on the side, one centimeter on my drawing, right, the scale drawing, compared to the actual. So that I'm really lining things up properly. I know that the actual is 475 centimeters. We're looking for x centimeters in the drawing. Now here, instead of cross multiplying, we want to get x by itself. So you could just multiply both sides by 470. And we get 475, so 475, not 470, sorry about that. 475 times 1 over 50. You could also just cross multiply and go 
435 times 1, 50 times x, and then divide by 50. Same thing. So 9.5 centimeters is the other measurement. So the scale diagram is 7 centimeters by 9.5 centimeters. And there you go. And the assignment for this one is 1 to 10. And that's it.